Life is a test, and the test ends upon death. Every little atom of good and evil one performs in his or her lifetime is recorded in a book of deeds, which will be presented to them on the day of judgment, and every soul will be held accountable for their actions. When one dies, he or she will remain in the grave, waiting to be resurrected, while in the grave, the deceased souls that deserve to go to hell will experience some suffering in the grave, whereas the deceased souls that are bound to paradise will experience peace while they wait for the day of judgment. When the hour comes, God will raise every dead person, including jinn, supernatural creatures, in order to judge them according to their deeds. God is the judge, the arbitrator, who will judge, recompense, reward, and punish his creation. Whereas God is most forgiving, he is also just. If one's good deeds outweigh his bad deeds, he will enter paradise and be amongst the successful. As for the one that his bad deeds outweigh his good deeds, he will enter the hellfire. One of the most fundamental aspects of Islam is the purpose of life is to save oneself from the punishment of the hellfire and to enter paradise eternally. Every soul will taste death and you will only be given your full compensation on the day of resurrection. So he who is drawn away from the hellfire and admitted to paradise has attained his desire. And what is the life of this world except for the enjoyment of delusion? Believing and accepting the reality of the last day, judgment day, paradise and the hellfire is a component of the six pillars of Iman in which every Muslim must believe and accept to become Muslim. There are many references to the hellfire throughout the Holy Quran. The ones in the hellfire will suffer tremendously both physically and spiritually. The pain, the horrors, the anguish, the hardship, the humiliation, the restlessness and all forms of punishments of the hellfire cannot be imagined nor perceived, nor grasped by the human finite mind. Not everyone in the hellfire will suffer the same. The gravity of one's sin will distinguish the severity of one's suffering. The hellfire is prepared by Allah for those who do not believe in Him. Believing gods other than Allah, rebel against God's religion and laws, and reject God's message and messengers. The hellfire is also prepared for sinners, criminals, murderers, tyrants, hypocrites, and the proud and the arrogant, the stubborn, the unjust, and all form of evil people. Do they not know whoever opposes Allah and his messenger, that for him is the fire of hell, wherein he will abide eternally? That is the great disgrace. Islam states one's salvation is based on one's faith in Allah, his messenger, good deeds, and God's mercy. As a part of the justice of Allah the Almighty, he does not punish anyone or any group of people until he has sent them a messenger, relaying his message and warning the people. It is the nature of God that he does not treat anyone unjustly or unfairly, and never would we punish until we sent the messenger. Of the biggest suffering the unbelievers and the evildoers will face is when they come to the realization on the day of judgment that they did not follow God's message nor his guidance and have failed, thus earning God's wrath. Many of the dwellers of the hellfire will instantly regret the choices they made in their lives and will beg for another chance. The Qur'an shares a dialogue that will take place between the dwellers of the hellfire and the angel gatekeeper of hell. It almost explodes in rage whenever a group is thrown into it. Its keeper will ask them, Did they not come to you a warner? They will reply, Yes, indeed, a warner did come to us, but we rejected him and said, Allah never sent down any message. You are but lost in a great delusion. And they will add, had we listened to those warnings or at least used our reason, we would not now be amongst those who are destined for the blazing flame. Then they will confess their sins, but far will be forgiveness for the companions of the blazing fire. However, no matter how much the sinners beg for forgiveness, it would be too late. The intensity of the hellfire will be so terrifying that people will disown their closest and most beloved people in their lives on the Day of Judgment and flee from them on this great day. But when there comes the deafening blast, on the day a man will flee from his brother and his mother and his father and his wife and his children. For every man, that day will be a matter of adequate for him. Man will be willing to give up everything he holds dearest to him to save himself from the hellfire. A quick dip in the hellfire will have a person forgetting about all the pleasures he or she had in their lifetime. Our prophet narrated, One of the people of the hell who found the most pleasure in life of this world will be brought forth on the day of resurrection, and he will be dipped into the fire of hell, 
Then he will be asked, O son of Adam, have you ever experienced anything good? Have you ever enjoyed any pleasure? He will say no by God, O Lord. Whereas there exists a minority of scholars that state the hellfire is not eternal, the majority of Islamic scholars state that the polytheists and unbelievers will reside in the hellfire forever, and that the hellfire is eternal for the majority of people that enter it. Indeed, Allah has cursed the disbelievers and prepared for them a blaze, abiding therein forever, if they will not find a protector or a helper. The hellfire, as well as paradise, was created by God the Almighty before mankind. Hell is so deep that if one were to drop a stone into it, it would take 70 years for that stone to hit its bottom. The hellfire is black and dark as night. The hellfire has various levels of severity and punishment according to the extent of disbelief and sins of those being punished in it. The lower level of the fire, the greater the intensity and punishment one suffers. Our prophet narrated the lightest punishment of the hellfire will be a man under the arch of whose feet will be placed a smoldering ember, and his brains will boil because of it. As for the most severe punishment in the hellfire, it will go to the hypocrites, as God states in his book, Indeed, the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire, and never will you find for them a helper. The hellfire has seven gates in which its inhabitants will enter. Each gate deals with a specific group of category of sinners, and each gate contains different forms of torture and punishment. The distance between each gate is equal to the length of 70 years. Before the inhabitants of hell enter, they will stand before the gate, feeling the heat and terror. They will be shoved and piled through the first gate until it fills. Then the rest will be piled and shoved into the second gate until it fills, and so on. The hellfire has 19 angels who are led by the chief keeper of the hellfire, named Angel Malik, who has never smiled since he was created. Angel Malik and the angels of the hellfire are very severe, harsh, and stern, who would never disobey God's commandments. After the inhabitants of the hellfire enter, its gates will shut, and there will be no hope of escape for the dwellers of the hellfire. The dwellers of the hellfire will beg and plead to the angel Malik, to let them out and he will respond, be quiet, surely you shall abide forever. The angels of the hellfire will have whips made of iron which will whip the inhabitants in it. The dwellers of the hellfire will bear animosity and hate amongst other inhabitants of the hellfire. As for the believers who practiced Tawheed, monotheism, and believed in the prophet that was sent to them from God, but lived a sinful life, they will be punished in the hellfire for a length that commensurates the level of their sins. Then they will be brought out of it and eventually sent to paradise. Some of them will be taken out of the hellfire with the intercession of their prophets, some by the intercession of righteous individuals, and some will be taken out solely by the mercy of God, the most merciful. The hellfire has different names with different descriptions that are mentioned in the Islamic tradition. Amongst the names of the hellfire are Jahim because of its blazing fire, Jahannam because of the depth of its pit, Lada because of its blazing flames, Saqar because of the intensity of its heat, Hatama because it breaks and crushes anything to debris that is thrown into it, Hawiya because whoever is thrown into it is thrown from the top to the deep bottom of its chasm or abyss. The dwellers of the hellfire will be made huge so every part of their body can feel the punishment. A person's molar tooth will be as big as Mount Uhud, a mountain in the city of Medina. The distance between the shoulders of the dwellers of the hell will be equivalent to three days of walking. The fire that exists and burns in this world we live in today is one seventieth of the severity and intensity of the hell fire in the hereafter. The fire kindled by the Almighty will burn the skin of its inhabitants, and every time their skin gets roasted, their skin will melt into their feet, and God will replace their burnt skin with a new one to be burnt again, and the process will keep on repeating so they may taste the punishment. Other forms of punishment include superheated scalding burning oil, which will be poured on their head, which will melt away and liquefy their internal organs. The inhabitants of the hellfire will be seized by chains and shackles, which will be tied around their necks and feet. Indeed, we have prepared for the disbelievers chains and chapels and blaze. The clothing in the hellfire will be garments of fire tailored for them with copper, so they will boil inside of it. The Qur'an references three types of food in the hellfire, 
which in fact worsen a sinner's torment when consumed. The food and drink of the hellfire do not provide nourishment, nor does it relieve hunger nor thirst. The dwellers of the hellfire will experience intense thirst, only to have hot boiling water given to them. Water so hot and intense that if a drop of it touches a mountain of this world today, it would turn it into dust. Amongst the food of the dwellers of the hellfire is the tree of Zahum, located in the lowest level of hell. Its branches are described like head of devils. Its vicious fruits severely burn the inside of a sinner's stomach. If a drop of its juice lands on earth, it would poison the whole earth and everything it contains. God the Almighty, the most merciful, the most compassionate, did not create the hellfire to just throw people in it, nor does he want to. In fact, God asks a rhetorical question in his book, stating, What can Allah gain by your punishment, if you are grateful and believe? And ever is Allah appreciative and knowing. God is not going to get anything from punishing anyone, and he wants reasons not to do it. In fact, God states in his holy Quran that he created mankind and jinn to worship him, glorify him, and exalt him, as he is the only one worthy of worship. And he states in another verse, from his end, he created mankind so that he could show them mercy, except whom your Lord has given mercy, and for that he created them. God introduced himself to mankind in his holy book, stating Alhamdulillah, which translates, all praise and gratitude belong to Allah as everything he does is perfect and praiseworthy, and nothing can be wrong with his plans. God then goes on to state, he is the master of everything, including the universe, the heavens, the earth, and everything it contains, including all people, and he has complete control of everything and everyone, and he can do as he pleases. God uses the word master instead of creator to emphasize he is the master, and we are his slaves and servants. One needs to realize that he or she is a slave and that God is his or her master and one cannot question him or his authority nor do they have any right to. A master can be just and kind or can be unjust and unkind. Allah the Exalted then goes on to say, He is the all-merciful master. If one accepts that he or she is Allah's slave and submits to him fully, he or she would find that God is the most beneficent, the most merciful as 113 out of 114 of his chapters in his book start with the phrase in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful to remind mankind of his mercy only when one submits to his master does one find his or her life become easier and better why would God want to punish an individual when he created him or her with love and mercy in the first place God wants to warn his servants about hell now so one can fix themselves and avoid it to their best of ability. It is best to be informed about the hellfire now and to recognize its severity, harshness, and how gruesome its punishment is in detail than it is to come across it in the hereafter, unprepared and not knowing of it. That in itself is a huge mercy, as God could have chosen not to warn one beforehand of the consequences of his or her actions. While God is all merciful, he is also all just. He states in the Qur'an, Indeed, Allah does not do injustice, even as much as in Adam's weight. If one commits murder or oppresses an individual, God may punish that person to be just to the person killed or oppressed, or to be just to the family member of the one being killed or oppressed. God states every soul shall receive their full compensation for the good and evil deeds they committed on the Day of Judgment. Additionally, if God allows the oppressors to oppress without punishing them, it would encourage more people to oppress and to commit evil, which would spread corruption even further. The fear of punishment indeed prevents some people from committing evil. God has also stated that He will surely forgive any soul that repents from their sins as He is extremely forgiving and extremely loving. There are certain individuals that want to blame God for going to hell because they do not want to fix their act, face reality, or be held accountable for their actions. It's important to realize, whether one accepts or believes in God and the hellfire or not, it does not change the reality that God and the hellfire do indeed exist, and one will soon find out. O oh, you who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from a hellfire whose fuel is people and stones. Quran 66.6 6.
Our prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.